couch Dat niet alles Hey there, Lickin' Riffers! Welcome back to yet another awesome guitar lesson here on Lickin' Riff, in which I'm gonna reveal all the secrets of the D shape chord, because you can take this chord and turn it without doing anything but moving it around. You can turn it into 11 different chords without doing anything but moving around the fretboard, okay? It's, it's incredible and it's actually mind-blowing when you first encounter it. But first, I want to mention that this lesson is sponsored yet again by Skillshare because Skillshare love lick and refers and they apparently love giving you two months of free premium access to their platform, which is a video learning platform. They have courses on anything from graphic design to logo design to music production to mixing and mastering to photo editing to film editing to cinematography to DSLR photography to creative writing to branding, marketing, business in general. Anything you want to learn, they have it on Skillshare. So click the link below in the description. Go claim your two full months of free premium access to all their courses on their platform. It's it's an amazing offer and it's just incredible to me that they keep coming back and love Lick and Riffers so much. It's 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 an honor uh, to be able to give you this gift. So uh, go claim it. And now we're going to talk about this beautiful, beautiful chord, the D chord. Because the guitar, the standard tuning is so ingenious, you can turn a D chord simply by moving it around. You can turn it into A Okay. You can turn it to F, you can turn it to G, you can turn it to A minor 7, you can turn it to E minor 7, you can turn it to D minor 7, you can turn it to C, okay, but it's a weird voicing, but it's still technically C. Okay? You can also turn it into really complicated chords, okay? like E7 sus4 add 9, okay? which is a really nice chord. We're playing this chord sometimes, but we're playing it differently. We're not used to playing it like this, okay? but it's, it exists. It's there. You can use it. So uh, let me show you a roadmap to using the D shape chord. And all these variations. So you have the D chord on two, right? On two on the E string. So that's a very innocent chord, okay? You look at it, you don't think it's anything complicated, and then you move it to nine, and suddenly you have A. Okay? And you play A, okay? the D shape on nine, nine, ten, nine, you play it with the A string, okay? And you have A. If you want E, play it on four with the open sixth fret. Then you have E. Then you can play E and A like that instead of playing the same old chords, okay? the same old sounds. You can surprise your friends when you accompany them, okay? when they sing. If you play the D shape on five with the fifth string, you get F. Okay, you get F over A. Okay, it's a very piano-like sound. If you do the same thing two frets up on seven with the D string open, you get G over D. Okay, this is this is the G chord. the D shape on 5 with the D string, you get D minor 7. If you play it on 7 with the open E string, the E bass string, you get E minor 7. If you play it on 12, 12, 13, 12, 
With the A string, you get A minor 7. Um, if you play it on two, okay, but not with the D string, but with the with the sixth string with E, then it suddenly becomes a completely different sound. It suddenly becomes the E seven sus four add nine, okay, and then you can go back to A. Okay, okay, bet you never or most of you have never thought of playing it like this, right? How about C? Well, you can play it on 12 with the E bass. Okay, this is C. Okay, it's C over E. Okay, it's a, it's a valid chord. It's a piano-like chord, okay? It's the same as F over A and G over D. Okay, it's just C over E. You can play it like this, or you can play it like this, okay? This is technically cheating and technically not cheating, because it's still the D shape, just on zero, zero, one, zero, with the E bass. It's E. Um, it's C over E. Right? If you want to hear it in context, you can play it with G. In the context, it would be E minor 7, so you can do it on 7. And then you can do A minor 7. Right? I'm just showing you chord progressions, you can practice this way. Then you can do D minor 7 on 5 with D. And then you can keep the D bass and go to 7, and now it's G. It's no longer E minor 7, it's G. Okay, and then you can do the C over E again. Then the same thing with the A bass. You're playing the same chord, but it, first it was C, now it's A minor 7. Listen to the difference again. Okay, and so on and so forth. And remember, you have... Okay, you have the, that complex E chord leading you to A. It's a really nice uh, way to end an A major song. You can use it, you can do A. Hey, you know what? Let's let's do let's do it in finger style. You can play A and E, F sharp minor, A C sharp minor, B minor, and then instead of E, you can play that E. You see, it works, and then leads you back to A. So it's a really nice tool to have in your toolbox, in your arsenal of licks and guitar knowledge. Um, so before you go practice this, uh, go and claim your two free months of premium access to Skillshare. Click the link below in the description and just go get addicted to video courses. Um, it's, it's just amazing that you can get this for free. So go get it. Um, I'll see you in the next lesson and thank you very much for watching. Go have fun. He's going to claim his two full months of free membership.